Hi, and welcome back to Twins Mommy. My name is Alma, and for this video, we're gonna talk about the five minute blogging schedule to help you have a quick growth. Whoa, are you new to blogging? Oh my gosh, and you're maybe a mom and you have toddlers and maybe a newborn and other kids and maybe you're homeschooling and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't blog, I have no time. But guess what? You can start blogging and doing five minutes a day that can really help you ramp up your blog. Trust me, there are totally things that you can do in your blogging schedule. It doesn't mean that you will immediately see growth. It doesn't mean that it will be super fast, but at least you are propelling your blog or your business if you're selling products forward. You're actively doing something in your blogging schedule every single day that will push your blog traffic up a bit you will push people to see your content and sign up to your newsletter if you have one. Even if you don't have an email list, even if you don't have products to sell, like a digital product to sell, you need blog traffic. And to do that, you need a blogging schedule. And if you don't have the time, realize that even with a few minutes a day, you can really see your blog growing. Now I own several sites, so I can't spend weeks and weeks on each of my sites. Sometimes I can only spend five minutes to do something quick for that one site and move on to something else and move on to something else. These specific blogging tasks in my blogging schedule are about five minutes that you can do. You can pick a few. If you actually have 20 minutes or more, you can definitely, you know, do a few of these tasks. I suggest that you try just doing one and time yourself. You know, it takes me five minutes. It may not take you five minutes. Find out which tasks take you the five minutes, and then you can add them to your blogging schedule. The first blogging task that you can do in five minutes is to create a pin. Now you might think, Oh my gosh, Alna, it takes me like 20 minutes to find the right font and then find the right structure and the find the right photo. How, how will it take me only five minutes? I got you. <laughs> I have 52 highly stylized and converting pin template graphics for you so that you can use them in Canva, make a copy of those templates and start using them. Let me show you. These are my 52 stylized Canva pin graphics that you can pick up. I'm gonna be adding a ton more, so hopefully I can get to 100, but I'm slowly adding more and more. So once you grab these graphic templates for your pins, you'll just make a copy. There's instructions on what you do once you're in Canva and you'll get access to all of these templates. They are free fonts that you can use. So even if you're not paying for Canva, which I am paying a subscription for Canva, the Canva Pro, even if you're not, you can still use these. These fonts are all free to use. These pictures are all free to use as well. Feel free to use your own fonts that you you have or play around with these different fonts. I tested many of these fonts and they are converting. A lot of them are easy to read and the style and the way I structure these headlines are clickable. All right, so over on Canva, this is one of my templates that I have in my pack of 52 stylized Canva pin graphics that we can use. So I'm just gonna just copy this and start fresh and I'm going to remove the images. I'm going to change my site. So let's make this for my other site. And since I don't talk about blogging on this site, I'm going to make this a content piece. So if I'm gonna go to Smart Mom Ideas, I'm only doing this for five minutes. I'm doing this very quick. I'm gonna do my latest post, the Easter game. I'm gonna go back to my, I'm gonna go back to my pin. I'm gonna put 37 amazing Easter games for the entire family to have fun for hours. So that's what it is. And then I'm gonna find pictures of Easter here. Now, since I pay for Canva, I'm, I can use the ones that are for me, Canva Pro, but there are definitely free ones to use. Here's one that's free, so I would just put that in there. And if I was gonna use another free one, here's another one here. Which one else I can use? I can also just pick free and then we can go from there. <laughs> that might make it easier. This one right here. All right, so I have all that. This one's not as bright, so I'm just gonna brighten it just a tad here. See, and there you go. I have created a pin. I probably didn't take me more than three minutes to do this gonna download it. Now you don't have to do the next step. If all you have is five minutes, leave this here. And if you still have like two more minutes, make another pin. If I wanted to do that, I can copy this one, swap out these, 
And again, instead of having amazing, I can have funny Easter games for kids, family, and adults. Like super easy. I can make this box even smaller. I'm like, that's, I don't need all of that. And just do this. I can change out the color in the background to make it yellow if I want and just have fun. If I have a few more minutes, right? Make this black. And then I can have more fun photos right here. Boom, I'm done. If I wanna brighten it, super easy. So super easy with this, make this maybe just a little bit bigger. And you can play around. You don't have to keep these colors. I can make this less, um, more transparent there. So boom, it's slightly different than this one, right? So I already have two pins. So it's super easy. I think one of the things that you should really focus on in your blogging schedule, especially if you're brand new to blogging, is to create those multiple pins. That's what I'm doing for my new niche site. I'm creating pin after pin after pin. It doesn't take me more. Like I schedule my blogging schedules from 8 to 8.30 at night to make and schedule as many pins as I could for that niche site. That's what I do. If I'm done early, then I move on to Twins Mommy and I make pins for that. And then if I'm done with that, I go to Smart Mom Ideas. That's what I do. I do that every single night as a way to grow my views on Pinterest and grow my audience. When I upload those pins, people are saving them. People are looking at them. Another easy thing you can do, let's say you don't have access to your computer and you can't make pins. You can definitely do this on your phone. It makes it super easy. Making even an idea pin on your phone is super easy and do it that way. As you're sitting with your child outside, as your child is you know, doing some water play or is playing in the dirt, you can make a quick idea pin or make a quick pin using the Canva app. And there you go, you had five minutes and you, you made two pins already right there. And with an idea pin, you can upload it right away when you're done doing all the cool things you wanna do with the ad and music and all that, that's great. Consider focusing like the biggest ROI, these biggest ROI tasks. One of them is creating pin graphics. <clears throat> the next blogging task in your blogging schedule, that's only five minutes to do, is finding a blog topic for your next blog post. Now, I know this could take forever for a lot of people, but a hack that you can do, a blogging hack, is to create a swipe file. Create a swap file already. You can put it in your WordPress backend blog as a drafted blog post. That's what I do. I also have a Google Sheet too. I have two places where I store my swipe file of blog post topics. And as I'm going through Pinterest, as I'm reading other blogs, that's where I'll find new blog topics. So let's go, Let's. we have five minutes. I'm gonna go to my Smart Mom Ideas profile and I'm gonna go just to the home and I'm gonna see what Pinterest is gonna serve up for me. And that will get me some ideas. A lot of these are my pins up on top here, and even this one. <laughs> but I can just, I can see what is what is already trending here. So a morning routine, I don't have that. Sibling traditions, traditions are common. Traditions are popular. Christmas traditions, Christmas Eve traditions, Easter traditions. Maybe I can do something with sibling traditions. So I already have two topics here, a morning routine for a stay-at-home mom and sibling traditions. I can go and see, is this even a popular topic? Morning routine. And if I see all of this, oh, I can even do something with school. So if school is coming up, this is a good topic for September. I can start thinking about creating content for that. So a morning routine school. And here, as you can see, Pinterest has populated what people are typing in. You're focusing on the time, having an incremental time in my schedule. Super easy. I can see here more topics. I can just talk about what to do at 7 a.m. Or I can make my blog topic your morning school routine from 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. or until 6 p.m. or something. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I can do something like that where I can have these numbers in my blog post and then use them as a title. Super easy. I have one right here. I can even make a morning routine as I wanted for a stay-at-home mom. So I can see here. I can also do this. They have stay-at-home mom mom morning routine, stay at home mom here, morning routine for stay at home mom. Lots here. I can use a lot of these wordings in my blog post and title my pins, all these different pins when I start creating those pins. As you can see, it's super easy to source blog topics just this way to get the pin traffic. Yes, you can source keywords and my main strategy for blog topics is through keywords. But if I'm in a pinch and I just need to see what's popular right now, you know, what's trending, you know, Easter stuff, a morning routine things obviously is a big topic topic on Pinterest, you saw all the bubbles there. Those are things that I know that will immediately get clicks. People will want to click on my pins and read my posts about that. So I already have two new topics 
force mom ideas right there. It took me less, probably, I mean, I tootled around a little bit, but if I was really on a time crunch, I could have found those like easily right there. The first 30 seconds, I found two pins that I thought were really cool. I did my little research. I found that there were many topics around that, that main topic, which means that people are searching for that in different ways on Pinterest, which means it's a popular topic. I can guarantee you that if I go into my SEO tool and start tooting around on that topic, I'll find lots of keywords. They may be difficult for me to rank, but it seems like it's pretty easy on Pinterest. This is where I need to sort of figure out what I'm going to do. If you're a brand new blogger, well, Pinterest is the way to go, right? In my course, Ready, Set, Blog for Traffic, I have an entire Pinterest module that is up to date with the best strategies for you to get those clicks. That's all I'm doing. That's why I spend time for my new niche site is to get people to my site, right? I am getting Google traffic now to that site, but I'm getting also pinners to my site. My initial traffic is with pinners. Right? And that's what you need to do with a new blog and with this blogging schedule that you only have five minutes, right? So that's your second blogging task. The next quick five minute blogging task that you can use for quick growth is to start repurposing your blog content, right? Another way to think of blog topics is to just repurpose what you already have, right? I told you that traditions is a, a thing for Christmas that I have, um, even like baby announcements. I can now just use those main topics, my umbrella of topics, and repurpose that into different ways. Sibling traditions, Easter traditions, summer traditions, baby announcement ideas for your husband, for your sister, for your grandparents, in the fall, at Christmas time, in the spring, in the summer. Already there's like 20 blog posts ideas for my lifestyle blog. If you watched my lifestyle video, I do mentioned that it is super easy to create lifestyle content ideas force mom ideas. Uh, like I said, I have content. My content schedule is full already till July. Now with these added ideas, like I have a whole year's worth of content for that site. It's super easy. So don't make it hard for you, especially if you're brand new to blogging with use that five minutes to just repurpose what you already have and to source topics on Pinterest. Another thing that you can do if you're in the back end of your website, if you're using a WordPress site in back end, you can embed YouTube videos very easily. If you're talking about like exercise routines for busy moms or your morning routine. If you want, go ahead and find a YouTube video and put that in to your into your blog post. You know, ideally it should be your video, but in the meantime, why not? That's what I've done with Smart Mom Ideas. I have a post on postpartum exercises and I have postpartum YouTube videos on there. It helps with ranking. It helps with engagement. It helps with people staying on my blog. So you can quickly add a YouTube video here and there on your latest blog post and on some old blog posts that only take five minutes to do. Another easy and quick blogging task is to draft an email. This is critical and it's one of those ROI tasks that needs to be done. If you don't have an email list, then you don't need to worry about this, but I suggest you do start an email list once you start your blog. If you need help, I'll put a link to my blog post on using ConvertKit. It's a ConvertKit review and why I switched from MailChimp. Drafting your next email. Now, you can definitely write about your latest blog post if you want your latest YouTube video, but I want you to try like making it more valuable. You know, with my Twins Mommy newsletters, I try to have a personal story about what's going on in my life. I introduce my latest blog post. I introduce my latest whatever I'm doing on social media. So I'm mentioning more valuable things and my YouTube videos, how I'm growing my Pinterest followers on my niche site. That's exclusive content right there. Try to think of some things that you can give your email subscribers an exclusive look before other people, before you share it on your blog, before you do a YouTube video, before you go on Instagram live, like do, treat your subscribers, you know, that way where they are, you know, they are giving up their email address they're giving up their inbox. And so you want to treat them. And so that's something that you can do if you're, like I said, if you're going on a walk with your toddler and you can sit on a bench, start drafting up that email, the next three quick blogging tasks that you can do for your blogging schedule are all centered around social media. So you can pick Facebook. I put Facebook as sort of my idea when I was thinking about this, but you can do Instagram commenting on Instagram posts or on Facebook posts and um, maybe creating a poll or some kind of um, post on your Facebook page 
or on your Instagram. You don't have to do this every day. You don't have to do this all the time. And it's not the highest ROI task you can do. But again, if you are pressed for time and you haven't done anything for your blog that day, go on social media, engage with your followers there. Even if you have a small following, that's okay. I found that you can get good engagement if you just ask a question in your Facebook page. If you're in a Facebook group like mine, ask a question or share your advice by answering. Another thing you can do is to start looking at your Google Analytics and seeing the content that is resonating with your audience and thinking of your next blogging task like that. So if I'm looking at my top posts for my sites, I can see like what people are really interested in. If it's my informational blog post about writing tips, then I'm going to keep writing about that. Just the little traffic that you have. I mean, you can still do that with my new niche site. I would wait another month, but I would go into my Google Analytics to see what's popular. I can see right now what's popular. I can write another blog post about that topic. Super easy, right? But I'm going to wait just a little bit until I have more content. But if we go show you quickly for, I'm not going to show you my main first page of the top posts that I have for my El McCain site, but this is page two. You can see, you know, writing tips, again, writing about page, making money, jobs, money, and jobs. <laughs> it's mostly jobs and money right here. I have more content about that on the second page for me. So I need to focus on that. I haven't done a post about money in a long time for my Ellen McCain audience. I can start sourcing blog topics that way. Just focus on the money aspect. That's a quick blogging task you can do for your blogging schedule. The next blogging schedule task you can do is to think of a new freebie for your email list. I try to create a couple freebies a year. They are difficult for me. Um, I do have one in the works. So my latest one is my blog planner kit that I created, which is like a 17 page planner workbook for you to help you start and grow your blog there to figure out your plan. You know, in the five minutes you can think of a cool freebie idea. If you need help, I do have a blog post called 42 proven ideas for your opt-in freebies to grow your email list. And those are just some of the quick five minute blogging tasks that I have for you. All right. So you can mix and match those quick blogging tasks for your blogging schedule it takes five minutes. So if you have five minutes here and five minutes there and five minutes there, which I did because I was a work at home mom, with twins, I didn't have much time. And so I tried my best to have blocks of time. So 20 minutes here, 30 minutes here, where I can group a lot of those little tasks to work. All right. So hopefully that helped you. Tell me in the comments below if you liked this video, if you found it helpful with these five minute blogging tasks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.